Welcome back. This is Lesson 7 for How to Compose Music 101, brought to you by ArtofComposing.com. This is going to be an exciting lesson because today we're going to be composing your first full piece. This is going to be in small ternary form, which I'll get into in a moment. So sit back, relax, and take a listen to the piece I've written for this lesson entitled Bagatelle Number 1. Small ternary form is a specific theme type in three parts. These parts are normally labeled A, or the exposition, B, or the contrasting middle, and then A with a little apostrophe, or also called the recapitulation. Before we take a look at each one of these in depth, I'd like to make a little analogy. Small ternary form is very similar to a movie. You have an opening, or beginning, where you introduce the main character, a middle section where the character develops, and then a closing section where you have resolution. Typically, the exposition is a standard sentence or period. There's nothing really new here if you've been through all the lessons up till now. Just remember, the key to the exposition is to establish the main theme and the tonality. So if we think about this as a movie, you want the audience to know the point immediately at the beginning. If a few minutes go by and you can't tell the point of the movie or what the character is about, or is trying to do, then you'll quickly lose them. The same goes for the opening of a small ternary form piece. You want to clearly and relatively quickly establish the melodic, motivic, and harmonic point of the piece. It is basically what you plan on or would plan on developing in a longer piece, like a sonata. In our example, we're using a period. It's also very common for the A section to modulate to the dominant in preparation for the next section. We'll just stay in the key for now, for ease of understanding. The B section is also known as the contrasting middle section. Here the composer develops the composition by several means, including changing the melody, rearranging the motives or adding new motives, having looser form, but by far the most common is harmonic means. In the overall scheme, the exposition is supposed to be clean, concise, and above all, stable, while the contrasting middle tends to be looser and less stable. It gets its lack of stability mostly from supporting the dominant harmony. It's most common to reach a dominant arrival at the end of the contrasting middle. A dominant arrival just means that we don't want to give it the weight of a full cadence. This may be from just standing on the dominant or ending with what appears to be a half cadence but with an added seventh. Occasionally you'll also find an authentic cadence in the dominant key, but this is less common. In our B section we have a pedal on G, which is the dominant, even though if you look at the notes, they are G, C, and E, you can really look at it more as a prolongation of 5 using the 1, 6, 4 chord. The contrasting middle contains new melodic ideas, and not just the same idea over the dominant harmony. For my melody, I inverted this figure. This gives us good continuity while at the same time a little variety. One thing that you may have noticed is a small figure after the 10th bar and at the end of the 12th bar. These are called interpolations. The textbook definition of an interpolation is musical material inserted between two logically succeeding formal functions. So if you look at our contrasting middle, we have a sentence. Bar 10 is the basic idea. Halfway through bar 11 is the repetition of the basic idea in a different harmony. 
Between these two formal parts of a sentence is the interpolation. And then after the repetition, before the continuation phrase, is the second interpolation. That's all it is, but it is a good way to add instability and loosen the form. If you are guessing what happens in the recapitulation based off of the letter, then you're probably about 50% right. There is a return of the main theme from the A section, although it frequently has slight changes in the melody or harmony, but this section differs mostly by getting rid of redundant material in the theme. Let's take a look at the score again. The score also comes with the printout, so make sure you have a copy in front of you. The exposition is a period that is eight bars. If you remember, a period states the basic idea, then a contrasting idea, followed by the basic idea repeated, and then a cadence. Just based off of the way it's worded, we know with two basic ideas one has to be redundant. So let's take the second one out. Next we have a contrasting idea and a cadence. They may be completely different contrasting ideas, but we know we have to end a period with a cadence. So this leaves us with one choice. We take out the first contrasting idea. This obviously leaves us with a much shorter recapitulation. This is usually repeated together with the contrasting middle. Now that we have the explanation of small ternary form out of the way, I would like to talk about the process of actually composing this piece. You may have noticed that the accompaniment to the melody is slightly more complicated than in previous lessons. I'll address this in the next lesson. To start, I'd like you to take a look at the simplified version of Bagatelle No. 1. This is on page 2 of your printout. We'll start with the exposition. I start off with a simple figure. If you look, all I've done is start with a basic 1 chord being prolonged by a 4 chord. This leads to a 5 chord, which is also prolonged using a 1-6-4 chord you'll see this cadential 6-4 type of progression frequently in the piece. In the contrasting idea, I have a small progression from 5 of 5 to 5 7 to 1, and then a half cadence using a cadential 6-4. These have all been covered in the previous two lessons. The basic idea is repeated, and then the contrasting idea maintains the same progression with a slight change in melody and then a complete perfect authentic cadence. I use a little modal mixture with a diminished 2 instead of a minor 2 chord. For the contrasting middle, I stated earlier how I just took this figure and inverted it. This is all over a pedal prolonging the dominant harmony. Interpolations are added. In bar 13, it is a small progression using 5 of 6 to 6 and then a half cadence. Finally, the A section differs mostly with the predominant harmony of the cadence being a diminished 7 of 5, leading once again to a 5 6 4. In the next lesson, I'm going to finish things up with talking about creating a more interesting accompaniment using dynamics, articulations, and everything else that adds flavor to your composition. If you found this lesson on YouTube or you were given the link by a friend and you want to go through the entire course, go to howtocomposemusic101.com and sign up.